What's up divas and what's up divos? It's your girl April and you know what time it is. It is Wednesday. So it is Real Talk Wednesday. So tomorrow marks Thanksgiving and in advance I wish you guys a happy Thanksgiving. I hope you guys enjoy your family and friends and some good ass cooking because your girl is going to be in the kitchen <sighs> all night and all morning so you know in case you're wondering i do record the videos like a day or two before wednesday because i like to get them up super early so that they are ready for you guys to go so it's actually monday evening right now and tomorrow tuesday i will start making certain things like potato salad macaroni salad seasoning up my meats and then wednesday i will start cooking some things in the evening so i have like a big thanksgiving spread from oxtails, turkey, ham, lasagna, baked mac and cheese, deviled eggs, potato salad, macaroni salad, um, fried cabbage with bacon in it, um, rice, um, cornbread, cherry pie, apple pie, some other kind of desserts, um, corn, greens, um, sweet potatoes, homemade sweet potatoes with melted marshmallows, and some other oh my homemade gravy that everyone just raves about which takes me like six hours to make um if i don't make it my daughter tati the oldest one she gets really pissed off so that is something that i do every thanksgiving i don't try to do that every sunday okay but lately i've done it twice a year okay and maybe three times because she was pregnant and she was begging for it so I will have a busy day and I hope you guys enjoy your day as much as I do because by the time I finish cooking, I don't even feel like eating. I just want to lay down. So yes. So in the meantime, I am sipping. Mm-hmm. Like always, this is one of my favorites. Well, this is Bacardi rum with pineapple juice and um, I love it. Like. It's really good. And I got some new glasses because if you guys remember last week I had my little plastic glass. Well, I just bought these from Dollar Tree and they're pretty heavy, but I'm pretty sure they won't last too long around my kids. So for the hair that I'm wearing, it is the same hair from last week, which is the Best Lace Wigs unit that I created um, with their Yaki Texture hair. I love this wig. Like, I love this hair. This hair is gorgeous and it's just so natural looking. So... Yes, yes, hunties. I love it. I love it. So anyway, so if you have a real talk topic that you are interested in emailing me, you can go ahead and do so to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject of the email, Real Talk. And if you want to change your name and characters in the email, please do so so that I can get right into the email and not sit here and think of names. Not like there's a million names in the world that I could easily pick, but sometimes my mind is like a little bit out of whack. So anyway, let's get into this real talk. Okay, so we're going to call her Olivia because I see that she did not change her name because her email address is the same as the name of the character. Hello, April. I've just discovered your channel. You're such an honest person and super funny, too. And I already love you. My name is Olivia. I am 22 years old. I am a 22-year-old virgin. I have a dilemma to choose between two guys that I want to date. The first one, I have known him for almost two years. Actually, we are in the same university. He's decent, understanding, respectful, and we can talk about everything. But I am not attracted to him. Not that he's not attractive. Also, we don't go out. He doesn't make any initiative to go out or meet up. He, he's just there. The second guy, I'm attracted to him. He's cool and funny, sweet. I've known for a month only. And on the flip side, he smokes, which I don't. And his social status is lower than me. But my main issue is he sounds like, or maybe my gut feeling, those guys who are always up to speed while personality, I'm just a chilled out girl who likes to take one thing at a time and not rush into anything, either be relationships, carrier, or any decision. I want your advice. I've never been in an official relationship because I feel like I can't find someone who is compatible to me. Most people think I'm choosy, but to be honest, I'm not. I just want someone who goes the same level as me. I really want to know your opinion. I like your straight up honesty because, because 
I like your shade of honesty. Thank you for your time and have a wonderful day. So, Olivia is 22 years old in college and she is a virgin. So, she has a dilemma. Which guy does she choose? Okay. So, first of all, I want to commend her because I get a lot of emails. And a lot of these emails that I get are from young women who are in college or have graduated college or have good careers. I am so impressed with that because you see the world today is like upside down and some of the youth are just like all over the place they don't want to do shit they don't they don't really care but i love to get emails when they mention that they're in college or they've graduated from college or they've got their masters or what have you i love to get emails like that because it's just so positive and so encouraging to read even for myself who doesn't have a masters it's still encouraging because you know what i can always go back to school so i am really like impressed with that now, here's the thing. She's a 22-year-old virgin. So what? They got 40-year-old virgins. They got some that ain't never had sex and about to die. Um, so losing your virginity, it is a big thing, but it is a special thing, okay? A really, really special and important event in your life that I really feel like you cannot just give up the cookie to just any booger bear. And I'm going to just say it like that because some niggas are like booger bears and they don't deserve shit. And I'm not saying as in looks. I'm just talking about attitude, okay? Because the ugliest guy to me could be the finest motherfucker to you guys. And he could have the sweetest personality. But here's the thing. So you want to choose. You don't know who to choose. So you, you got the one dude who's in school with you and you guys got a lot of things in common. You guys relate to one another very well. It's just that he doesn't take the initiative to go out. And hang out. He's just there. And the other one, he's, you know, more outgoing, but he smokes. I'm not really sure what he smokes because you didn't say. But does he smoke weed um, or does he smoke cigarettes? Either one of them is a bad habit. And I'm going to be the first to admit, yeah, I did smoke cigarettes and I quit. And you guys know that last week I did show you my little blue electric cigarette. Girls, I puffed away on that damn thing. There ain't nothing left. I have to go out and give me a new one. Um, and as for if he smokes weed, well... I'm going to be the first to admit and say, yeah, when it's evening and I'm about to lay my black ass down, this is how honest I'm going to be, okay? I got a bong. I got a bong. And I, 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 I smokes, okay? Because I, there's no excuse. I just want to, all right? I just want to. And I like to. I don't go out in public smoking blunts because that's so unladylike. I don't do that. Um... If I want to smoke a blunt, it'll be in my own vicinity, my own dwelling. You'll never see me outside in public high or drunk. Those are things that I just don't do. So when you see me drinking, I'm always in the house. I don't leave my home. Okay, if I'm going out to the club, which I really, very rarely do. Um, last time I went to the club was probably like two years ago. Um, I, I do have a few drinks, but I don't get drunk because it's not appealing. And I really... I just don't like to get drunk in public. It's not cute. But, yes, so I do smoke. <laughs> okay, and I'm pretty sure some of y'all bitches that's watching this is smoking right now while y'all watching this. Or y'all just smoking in general some weed. So, don't front act like y'all better than everybody else. But anyway, so you want to know who to choose, but some people think you're too picky. Okay, you know what? Sometimes being too picky is a good thing because if you just want to... Be with any Tom, Dick, and Harry, you might choose him, and you ain't really investigate this motherfucker. You really don't know too much about him, but you think his looks are appealing, and that's all you're going off of, then that's the wrong move. So being too choosy, what your friends may call you, or too picky, what your friends may say about you, let them say that. Because being too choosy and too picky sometimes may land you the perfect man for you that's compatible to you. So never worry about what other people are saying because are they having issues in their relationship? Is everything hunky-dory for them? Okay. Here's the thing. I used to worry about a lot of things that people would say, how they would look at me. You know, I wouldn't go outside without no makeup on or my hair not done. And I could be going right across the street to the corner store, but you would never catch me outside with a scarf on or no makeup. Because that just, I just was so worried about what people would think and how they would see me now to this day and age i'm 41 years old i could give a rat's ass if you see me outside with a scarf on and i have met a couple of people outside with a scarf on um in arizona one lady in particular she screamed out my name in the parking lot 
and I had on my turban. It was neatly tied and a tank top and some jean shorts and some flip flops because I was just running in the grocery store to get some water. Okay, I don't remember if my face was made up. I don't even remember. And I, th I don't really think it was. But, you know, she, she mentioned my name and she took her phone out. She was like, ah, oh, to take a picture of you are not representing New York looking like that. I had to let her know, you take a picture of me if you want to. You will not receive your phone back, okay? Just because I'm on YouTube does not mean I am not a human being, okay? I have seen many people outside without my makeup and hair on. And I could care less what you think about me. Because I'm human just like everybody the fuck else. I don't wake up like this, okay? Not like that song Beyonce sings, I woke up like this. No, bitches. I did not wake up the fuck like this, okay? I did not. I would like to say I do, but um, it's a little bit too much work to be going to sleep with all this fucking hair and makeup on, okay? Fucking up my sheets and my pillowcases and sweating me the fuck out? Please, no. I did not wake up like this, so I'm human. So I could care less what people think about me. And if you worry so much about what people think about you and how your values are, then it is going to drive you insane. And what you're going to do is you are going to do things just to please that particular person or those particular people people in general so Olivia you do what's good for you now I'm not come I'm not gonna say go ahead and give up the coochie to one of these dudes because it seems like neither one of them are on your caliber you're not really too interested in either one of them because the other one he's not on your social status and I'm not really sure what you mean about that however the first one who you have a lot in common with and he goes to school with you you do like to talk to him and you talk to him about everything however the only issue that you've mentioned is he doesn't want to meet up he doesn't want to go out he doesn't take the initiative here's the thing olivia sometimes men are a little bit scared to take the initiative not all of them but there are some that are a little bit scared and nervous to take the initiative because they don't like a turn down they don't like being turned down. They don't like the answer no. Okay? So sometimes you have to put your best foot forward and take the initiative and say, Hey, Charles, let's go bowling. Let's go out to eat. Let's go to the movies. Let's go hang out with our friends in public and see what he says. Because he may be digging you just as much, but he just don't like to be told no. And I could totally understand that because I'm one of those people I don't ask for anybody's help and I may need it at times but I don't because I don't like anyone telling me no so what do I do I don't ask I, and it could be the littlest thing like can you pick up the kids or can you put the clothes in the laundry anything little and minute like that I won't ask I'll take on all of the loads and responsibilities myself because I don't like anyone telling me no for anything whatsoever so that might be his issue he may just not take the first initiative to say let's go out because he don't want you to tell him no I don't want to go out with you or no I don't want to do this so why don't you approach him? And if that's the only issue that is holding you back from spending more time with him and being in a tight relationship with him, then by all means, take the first initiative and say something to him. Because you didn't say anything ill-mannered about him except for he doesn't take the initiative. Now, Olivia, on to another note. You're only 22. You were in college. You're still very, very young. And so why you're still a virgin? Hey, at least you know you ain't having no babies. You ain't got no kind of sexually transmitted diseases. And you are just a virgin. Okay? There's nothing wrong with being a virgin. Sometimes I wish I could be a virgin. Okay? Really. Because some people make it seem like sex is the best thing in the world. And I'm not going to say it's not great because it is good with the right person however no need to rush yourself into having sex and and, and becoming a non-virgin okay it's not it's not that cracked up what it's what it appears to be you know you got these thoughts running around who just want to fuck everybody and they got names for themselves that they mama didn't give them you know their mama didn't give them them names but you know Miss Loose Pussy, Miss Loose Booty, whatever you want to call it. But I just think, you know what? 
is nothing wrong with being a virgin and when it's time for you to be a non-virgin when it's time for you to be intimate sexually with someone then that time is going to happen and you are going to know when it is so these two dudes that you are contemplating on which one to be with don't contemplate of i'm gonna give them a pussy don't put that in your mind contemplate as a friendship with them and let it grow and if he is really worth it then you will know now some people will say oh wait to marriage wait to marriage okay that's fine and dandy too but that's not a rule for everyone and shit don't just happen like that all the time unfortunately you know you're not all tongue kissing and feeling all over each other and then you be like oh I'm only going to have sex with you when you put a ring on it, okay? And marry the pussy. It doesn't work like that. The heat of passion is the fucking heat of passion and shit goes the fuck down. That's just how it be, okay? I I didn't wait till I got married to have sex. I mean, obviously not because I was 17 when I was pregnant with my first kid and I had him when I was 18. So you guys know I was not married. And I ain't married now. I mean, not a virgin either, but I'm saying I ain't married now. And I'm I'm not waiting to get married to have sex with my with my man. You know what I'm saying? Could you only imagine? A girl would be tight, but that's only because I already know what it's like. Okay, but <laughs> Olivia, take your time. Don't worry about what others think of Olivia's choices and decisions. Hey, you go to school. Go to school and put your head in your books. There is plenty of men out there that you are going to find that it's going to be worth your hearts okay and you are going to find the perfect one and the hell with what your friends say that you choosy maybe that's their problem that they not choosy enough and they just fuck with any tom dick and harry i'm just saying so let olivia know what you would do in this situation do you think she's too choosy if you was a 22 year old virgin or an older virgin what is your thoughts of being a non-virgin okay i'm just saying what's your thoughts of being a non-virgin Okay. <laughs> this is, um, I like this one here, this real talk, because it is so short and sweet and right to the point. So we are going to call this young lady, um, Denise. Very short email. Hello, refer, oh, we're not going to call her Denise. Hello, refer to me as wise one i hate to be the one who's right but i am i love my grown children but some of them don't have the common sense god gave a fly i tell them what is right at the times i see it i'm blunt straight to the point i try to lay low and let them go through what they need to go through but when it comes to my grandchildren i don't hold back and i say what i need to i hurt their feelings sometimes and i mean to because life is hard and i've got to keep it real and that was it so wise one is sound like me because I will tell you in a minute. I'm well. I won't tell all you guys that, but I do tell my man and my kids that I'm always right. And nine times out of ten, when I'm telling them some shit, I'm fucking right. And they're always coming back to me like. So I have a lot of common sense because my mother did not play that shit with me back when I was growing up. So the things that these kids do today. They be off the goddamn wall and chain. And you know, go ahead, do what the fuck you want to do. But just like me, I got two grandchildren. When it comes to my grandkids, we don't play that shit at all. You want to be a jackass and you want to do what the fuck you want to do, then go ahead. But when you bring my grandchildren into it and I'm seeing some shit that I don't like, there's no holes bar. And I'm going to use an example, okay? When my son... And his girlfriend and my grandson were here last year. They were staying with me, you know. First of all, the little boy is two. He was going on two. I think so. Yeah. When they first came, he was almost two. Anyway, there's no reason to have that little boy up to two and three in the morning. Running around in my motherfucking house. Screaming, playing with toys, screaming. While I'm upstairs trying to go to sleep. And on top of that... He got his baby mother, which is his girlfriend. She did not know that Tati stayed home from work one day because we worked together. Because Tati was pregnant and she wasn't feeling well. So, the young lady stayed home. 
um, was home and Tati was home. But she didn't know Tati was home because Tati was upstairs in her room laying down. But Tati could hear every fucking thing. So my son's girlfriend was downstairs. Um, sh lazy. You don't want to get up until like 11 o'clock in the afternoon. I say 11 o'clock is the after fucking noon. It's not the morning to me, okay? Your son is in there wanting to eat. My son, my old, my son is, his father is at work. And you are in my home with your baby. And it is like 11 something, almost lunchtime. And you don't want to get out the bed and make him nothing to eat. He's saying he's hungry and crying and you cursing this bitch cursed him out so bad okay that tati heard it all the way upstairs and came out to her room and down the steps and was like what is your problem maybe you should get up and feed your child come on sweetums you want to get something to eat i'll make you some eggs i'll make you some breakfast and what did we do my daughter called me and told me and you know what I did when I picked up my son from work I sure did snitch I'm a snitch bitch yes mm-hmm yeah because here's the thing you're not gonna treat my grandchildren any fucking kind of way because you want to be a lazy fucking bitch and don't want to do shit here's another scenario my oldest daughter she got her own apartment got a nice little apartment they got a pool and everything really nice but this is her very first apartment and she's a messy person she's not dirty but she's messy okay so I, my grandson is 10 months old there's no reason for me to come to your apartment every day and you got shit all over the place. Like, when I say a mess, a mess. From the time you moved in, you haven't cleaned up anything. You've lived there for two months now, and it's just getting worse and worse. And me, I try to hold my tongue sometimes because I know how I can get. I have no filter, and I'm really, like, straight to the point. This is what it is, and this is how it's going to be. Whether you like it or not, regardless, or I don't really give a fuck, this is how it is. And I've, say, I've said things to her many a times when she was living in my own house here about her room. Meaning, this ain't really your motherfucking bedroom. This is my room because I pay to live here. You just in the room. You don't pay to live here. So the room that you're in... You are just dwelling in it temporarily. But in reality, the shit belongs to me. This whole motherfucking house belongs to me. So it's my bedroom. So here's the thing. I cleaned up their bathroom because my daughters have their own bathroom. My son, his room is downstairs. He have his own bathroom. And I have my own bathroom. I don't really feel like I should go into that bathroom and clean up after you when you got Q-tips and makeup and shit and a mess all over the bathroom sink and stuff. Because you're the only one that's in there putting makeup on. Mumsy is 8 and they is 13. They don't put on makeup. And, and on top of that, the room is a fucking disaster. You got dirty clothes all over the floor. Diapers filled up in a pail. Just a bunch of shit going on. So I said something to her one time about it. Because I got fed up. I said, you know, I got fed up, and this is what she says to me in return. Well, I work, and you always talking about how you have five kids, and how you did this and did that. We all know you have five kids, but you don't have to keep saying it to me. Here's my thing, like I had to tell her. First of all, I have five kids, that's right, and my house was never a mess like this. My room was never a mess like this. So there's no excuse. Clean up the fucking room. My grandchild is in here sleeping, okay? Bottom line. Last week, same scenario. I went to her apartment to bring her son home after I had him for the day. And her apartment was a mess. I got tired of seeing it. I had already said something to her about it. This time around, I was like, you know what? I'm going to just take Tinky home with me. And you clean up your house. And then when you're done, you can call me back and I'll bring him back. Because not, he's not about to stay here. No, mommy. No, no, no. I want my baby. I was, I, I, you know, basically, bottom line, I let, I let her know. I'm not going to keep fucking coming over here to your house looking like shit because this is disgusting. You are not to be walking around and he is not to be over here living like this. So you either fucking clean it up or I'm going to fucking take your kid home and then you're not going to get him back until you fucking clean this house up. Well, my blunt, non-filtered motherfucking mouth sure did work because the next day when she called me over just inviting me for dinner, sure enough, it was fucking spick and span clean. So, unfortunately, sometimes being blunt 
and unfiltered works because every time you sugarcoat shit for your kids they take it as a goddamn joke and think shit is not for real and serious out there and i tell them all the time you want to go ahead and act stupid go ahead and fucking act stupid you'll be flipping burgers for the rest of your fucking life if you don't get an education okay or you want to smoke weed because you know my kids are older i have a 23 year old i have a 20 year old i have a 17 year old 13 and 5 so of course you know i got my 17 year old he, he do some dumb shit sometimes, some real dumb shit. And I have to check him on it, and it, it hurts his feelings. You know what I'm saying? He get it, he be into his feelings because I'm like the bad guy. However, I'm not about to let you walk around me or in public because you're representing me. Because you know how it is. People see your kids, and they always be like, oh, what's going on at home? Why are you acting like that? They look at us as black parents. They look at us as if our kids ain't been taught shit. And you ain't about to embarrass me. I don't play that shit. Homie, don't play that. So being blunt and non-filtered to your kids sometimes is a lesson to be learned by them. They need that because they don't take shit serious in the real world. And whether it be my children or my grandchildren, I'm not about to let you do dumb shit and I'm going to stand there and allow you to do dumb shit. However, if you want to continue to do the dumb shit, then, you know, eventually you'll, you'll learn the fucking lesson. But don't involve my grandkids in it, okay? My, my grandkids, plural. So, wise one, I feel you on that. I totally do. Because they just don't get it sometimes. They just don't get it. So let the wise none wise one know how would you do how how do you communicate with your kids or your grandkids when it comes to your grandkids or your kids how do you communicate with them do you think that being blunt and non-filtered and straight to the point sometimes is too much some kids can't take it some people can't take it and me I just have no filter for a lot of shit and I'm just not gonna deal with a lot of shit. Okay, so this one is the last one. We got 15 minutes and it's long. So I'm going to sip this right now so my mouth don't get dry. And, um, we're going to call her Denise then because I don't see any name change. Hi, Miss April. Just a small revision on my email. I realized I did not put real talk in the subject. I just want to start off saying that I am a longtime fan and have been watching your videos for years on years. Probably since I was 13 and I'm 18 now. This is going to be a long one. She said it. But anyway, let me jump into the story. The names will already be changed to make it easy for you. So, oh, so her name is going to be Trisha. As I said before, I'm 18 years old. I have just recently graduated high school back in June and, I'm a co and I go to college next week. I identify as a lesbian and I loved girls my whole life. I've pretty much been a very good girl my entire life. I've always been well behaved, well spoken, well mannered and all around just a sweetheart to any and everyone I've encountered. It's just part of my nature. Anyway, this summer with it being my senior year and all and after just getting out of a terrible relationship with my ex, I decided that I owed it to myself to make sure I had the best summer of my life. In the past, my summers have always been very somber and sad. I didn't want that anymore. I wanted to break out of my shell and live, and that's exactly what I did, girl. I partied, drank, went out, met so many new people, went on so many great trips, and just lived. I did this all responsibly and while knowing my limitations, of course. But it felt so good to just be alive. I've had my fair share of very small flings this summer. You know, the ones that come and go, and while they hurt, I got over them. But then something really unexpected happened. You see, April, I think my life lately has just been full of so many unexpected events lately that I just stopped being surprised by anything. Almost like I became numb. So now my, so my now ex-best friend was dating a girl. My birthday was in the summer, so my friends decided to throw me and one of my other friends a combined birthday party. My ex-best friend brought her then-girlfriend. Her girlfriend's name was Shane. I was a little tipsy at the party, and I'm quite naturally a vocal person. So imagine me when I'm loose. Anyway, I sat down next to her girlfriend and started talking to her. She seemed so kind and down to earth and I just adored her. We started talking about how my best friend's ex did her wrong and how she sucked. At some point in the conversation, I stopped and told her, you know, if you weren't with my friend, I would totally kiss you. She then replied, yeah, but you know, we can't do that. 
that'd be wrong to your friend. And so we continued our conversation from there. Now fast forward, about two weeks I was on a mini vacay in Jersey for my birthday. Just me, myself, and I in a nice hotel room. I took this trip kind of randomly just because I needed a stress reliever. I suffer from mild anxiety and depression and I have for a good chunk of my life. With me being a very dependable, loyal, loving person, people come to me with a lot of situations, stories that they want me, want my help with and outlook on. Now, while I have no problem with helping them, I'm the type of person who will put someone else before themselves and not even realize it. It is my dream and life goal to continue to inspire and uplift young girls, but I think there's a fine line between being there for others and putting yourself on the back burner. I have yet to learn balance I have yet to learn to balance it out, but I'm sure I will in time. So back to the story. While I'm on my little vacay in Jersey, I get a call from my ex best friend. She's telling me that she's in the car with Shane, her girlfriend, and that she's very annoyed with her and all these other things. She said that Shane was driving her car and started calling her derogatory things like dyke and a dumb bitch. I was just trying to keep my friend calm, reminding her not to act out of anger or emotion. Later on that night I got a phone call from Shane. She told me that she was at the police station ready to file a report against my friend for physically harming her and threatening to kill her. She told me that she wanted my advice and outlook on the situation since that was my friend. And she also told me that if I could get my friend to cordially speak to her and resolve the issues, that she wouldn't file a report against her anymore. I honestly couldn't get my friend to say one word to her. Now, to add even more fuel to the fire, before Shane even asked me to get into contact with my friend for her, she told me something heartbreaking. She basically told me that my friend has been talking shit about me behind my back. Someone I considered to be one of my best friends was dogging my name and didn't, and I didn't even know it. She told me countless hurtful things that I just could not believe. And she told me that no matter what, I shouldn't be her friend again because she's a heartless, cruel person and there's no reason for us to be friends. When I confronted my friend about all of the things I heard, she said she denied it. She seemed so guilty when I confronted her about it, though. She didn't even seem like she was genuinely hurt by the fact someone would even say that she said those things. My, my and my friend quickly f fell off and Shane and I began talking more often. Casually just about the situation, but then it turned to something more. As I was coming home from vacay, I posted something on Snapchat about liking a girl. It was about Shane. She then saw it and also made a post about liking a girl. Later on that day, she texted me and was straightforward and asked me if I liked her. I told her I'd be lying if I said I didn't and she said so the, f the feeling was mutual. We pretty much took it from there. We started dating. Things moved so quickly. We had sex within the second night. We started going out, and she took my virginity. She started take. She started developing feelings. We started developing feelings for each other very, very quickly. I started being a little more public about a relationship, and none of my friends were having it. I mean, none. My true best friend called it before we even started dating. I thought it was just them being protective, but quickly things started to change. Shane started being very aggressive towards me. She liked to portray herself as a motivated Gandhi-like person, but she was a very, but she was very different. She would often tell me to get a job and stop being stagnant when I would explain to her that I just left my last job and I'm on the lookout for a new one. She would preach to me night after night about how I am lazy and I make poor choices when it comes to my friends. She told me my friends were nothing and that they were a part of what was holding me down. You would think that some days there would be a little let up, but no. Night after night, she was on my case, telling me about everything that she thought I was doing wrong. She confessed to me that she was very in love with me, and I believed her. But I am very confused, because this is not what love should look like, or feel like. Things got very ugly very quickly. Shane always told me that she would never hit another woman, but choked me on two different occasions, and even told me that if she knew me three years ago, she would have killed me. There have been times that the words she has said have cut me so deep that I've thought of harming myself. She would talk about my weight and how I needed to lose it. On her birthday, she even got mad at me and winded up sleeping with my ex-best friend, her previous girlfriend, and tried to hide it from me. I still took her ass back for whatever loony reason. Now it's to the point where she's back with her other ex, who she claims she was madly in love with. She calls me whenever she wants to. She even still tries to tell me she loves me, even though she spends half of the day laid up with a no good girl. This relationship has caused me pain out of the ass, Miss April. I really don't I really do not like myself when it comes to love because I know I deserve better. But I am so desperate and, and so eager to love that I think I'm willing to tolerate anything to, to to get it because I crave it. 
I know that if I want to be an inspiration and a role model for younger girls, that I need to practice what I preach and not take the bullshit. But I think at this point, I'm so blinded by the emotion that I feel that I'm not seeing things for what they really are. So my question to you, Miss April, is if you were me, how would you walk away from this toxic, fatal relationship? Wow. That was a long email, but it was so well worth the read. And I'm trying to remember, what did I say her name was? Trisha. Wow, so Trisha has, she, first of all, I'm happy for her. She graduated from high school. She wanted to live, live in la vida loca, live in la vida loca. So she wanted to enjoy her summer. She, she felt alive. Let me tell you, I wish, you know what? I don't remember those days. I mean, yeah, I remember them. But damn, I would like to have like a crazy summer. I'm not gonna go around fucking people but i'm just saying i wanna have fun and go on vacations and just chill with my kids too i want them to come too you know be part of it but damn so trisha has hooked up with her ex best friend's girlfriend but what's the girl name shane i think her name was shane Shane came to uh, Trisha telling her all the shit that her best friend said about her, all this heart-wrenching shit, and when Trisha confronted her best friend about it, she was like, I didn't say that. But then you got with her girlfriend, her ex-girlfriend, and all she did was dog Shane, um, dog Trisha out, dog her out. Like, you know something, I never knew that in a lesbian relationship that they could be like that, but it's true. It doesn't matter if it's the same sex relationship. They are abusive, just as abusive some of them, which is fucked up. Um, and here's the thing, Trisha just wants love. She just wants to love somebody. She just wants to be loved. She just wants to experience love. But here's the problem. She wants love so bad that she's willing to just deal with any type of bullshit. And girlfriend, I know the feeling because I dealt with that same shit for many years in my past relationship, my marriage, that I dealt with so much shit. Because I want it to be loved. Everybody wants to be loved. You cannot sit here and tell me that y'all don't want to be fucking loved. Because being loved is the shit. Like, for real. If someone loves you and you, it make you feel good inside, warm and cozy and fuzzy. However, when you got some fucking degenerate that's fucking you up mentally and shit and abusing you and shit, that's not love. That's pure fuckery bullshit. So... Here's the thing, Trisha. You want to be loved. You want to love someone. You crave love. That is the case. That is so. However, you it's starting to feel like you're being desperate for love. You want love so bad, you're just desperate for love. And you, you'll just take whatever. But that's not the case. You have to love yourself first. Just like you said, you cannot put yourself on the back burner. And you do need to practice what you preach. I will be the first to tell you, I needed to practice what I preached many years ago by fucking with my ex-husband. You know what I'm saying? However, we go through shit and we learn the lesson. But you've woken up because you sitting there heart-wrenching and hurt. You know what I'm saying? Because you got this fucking lady, this bitch, fucking just putting you down and talking to you like you ain't shit. It is one thing to be in a relationship, but it is another thing to be in a relationship where somebody is verbally fucking with you mentally and emotionally. Like, that's not cool at all. They don't really give a fuck about you. That girl that you was fucking with, she don't love you. Nor does she love your best friend, neither. She don't love nobody but herself because she's being greedy and selfish, okay? And for her to come and tell you, oh, she said this and she said that and she said this and she said that about you, you know what I'm saying, and then fuck with you and then go back to her, that was just a ploy to get y'all to be fighting so she could fuck with you. That's, that's exactly how I'm seeing it. Because if that was her girl, but she trying to tell you, well, can you please talk to her and I won't press charges against her and blah, 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 blah. That girl is straight up troublemaking trash, you know what I'm saying? I'm not really sure why you are not best friends, best friends with your best friend no more. But if it's because of this bitch, trust and believe she's not worth you losing any of your friends over. And your best friend, your ex-best friend, we're going to just call her your best friend. Your best friend, she needs to realize too that that's not really somebody that she needs to be with. Because had it been that her she really need to be with her, then that girl would have never fucked with you on the side. So y'all are clashing because of some pussy. You know what I'm saying? Pussy, pussy, and pussy. Three pussies. Three, three. Three pussies, and y'all clashing because of one stinking ass one that's in the middle. You know what I'm saying? Here's my thing, Trisha. Don't let nobody dictate your shit. Ever. You know what I'm saying? Don't let nobody come up into your dwelling and tell you you need to do this, you lazy, you need to do that. 
I don't give a fuck if I'm lazy and I need to do whatever. Don't be up in my space and my face and my shit trying to tell me how to live my motherfucking life. Because I'm grown. You grown just like that bitch is. And abusive relationship is not a relationship. That bitch don't love you just as much as she don't love your best friend. Okay, she's confused is what her problem is. And nine times out of ten, they're not going to last. Or they're going to end up beating the shit out of each other. Because she want to put hands on you and then your best friend want to put hands on her. Like, it's just a fucking uh, tangled up weave just going crazy. Here's the thing, Trisha. Everybody wants love. Everybody needs love. Everybody loves to be loved and give love out. However, when you're in a relationship that's not healthy, then you need to take a moment and step back and realize this is not good for Trisha. Trisha don't deserve this. I want to be a role model to young girls and to anybody who want to come and talk to me. And how am I to do that if I'm fucking up and I'm showing signs of abuse? How are you going to pre preach to anybody when your shit is, the fuck is fucked up? You know what I'm saying? Don't be desperate for a relationship because it seems like you're desperate for a relationship. And don't cut your best friend off because of no fucking bitch. Never do that. Please. Bitches, men, they come a dime a dozen, okay? There are so many of them out there in the ocean. But real true friendship is forever. You know what I'm saying? Don't let no fucking pussy, no fucking dick come in between your friendship with anybody. With anyone. Because for what? When your relationship is over with that person because it ended fucking sourly like it just did, your friend is still going to be there if they are a true friend. So, when you're in a relationship with somebody and you notice signs of bullshit, get the fuck out of it. Because a headache is not what you need. And trust me and believe, I've had enough headaches in my lifetime that I am not about to let no man or female fuck me over ever again. Take some time for yourself, Trisha, and Wusa, because that's what you're going to need to do after this bullshit. And find yourself a good girl, please. Find yourself a good girl in school. So on that note, I'm running out of time. I hope you guys enjoy your Thanksgiving. And as always, leave your comments below and stay diva and divalicious.